Hello, balance sheet. Balance sheet tells us how we're doing as of a specific point in time. So for example, if we want to know how much cash we have as of a specific point in time, well, cash is an asset. We can go in and we can tell someone how much we have at that point in time. The balance sheet is the accounting equation. It has assets in it, has liabilities, has owner's equity. Assets are what the company owes and they're going to use in order to help generate revenue in the future. Liabilities are something that we owe because of some transaction that happened in the past. And the equity is going to be what is owed to the owner. The equity is important because it's also representing the book value of the company. Notice if we have assets of this, if we were to cash everything out, then we would assume we can get cash of 78000 Minus liabilities, if we were to pay off all of our creditors, we would pay 10000 That means we have a book value of 68000 That's what the owner supposedly could walk away from if they sold the business. Notice that we have a balancing account here in that we have total assets equal total liabilities plus owner's equity. That's our accounting equation. That's our balance sheet. Balance sheet is in balance. The accounting equation is in balance. That is our double entry accounting system. Now notice here that there's no debits and credits. We're not looking at debits and credits because when we give this to someone else, we don't want to confuse them with debits and credits. We'll talk more about debits and credits in the future, but if we were to break this out in terms of debits and credits, it would look something like this. We don't actually do this on the financial statement, but it'll give us an intro into what debits and credits are. If we put these accounts into debits and credits, debits on the left, credits on the right, assets, total assets up here are going to be the debit side, adding up to the 78,000. And then the liabilities and the equity are on the credit side. So this is to point out that we could represent the double entry accounting system in terms of the accounting equation. We could say the balance sheets and balance or we could say that total debits equal total credits. Those are different ways to say the same thing. Note that if we look at the income statement, we're talking about how we did over a certain time period. This is performance. If we were to ask you how much money you earn, you would have to assume that I'm talking about a time frame like a year or a month. So we talk about revenue. That's how we did, in this case, over a month. Minus expenses. Those are things we had to use in order to help us generate or consume that revenue. That's what we consume to generate revenue. Revenue minus expenses, that's the net income over the certain time period. Notice again, there's no debits and credits here. We don't want to confuse our reader, but we use debits and credits to make the income statement. If we saw the income statement in terms of debits and credits, it would look something like this, meaning debits on the left, credits on the right of the T account. Expenses are going to be debits. They add up to 60000 And revenues credits, they add up to 100000 Note that these two are not equal in this case. Note that they're not equal. And in the balance sheet, they were equal. We said that the double entry accounting system means that total debits and credits are equal. Also note that there's no subcategory of anything in our accounting equation. There's no asset subcategory, no liability subcategory, no uh, equity subcategory on the income statement. So the question is, how does the income statement relate to the double entry accounting system? How does the income statement relate to the, to the accounting equation? How does the income statement relate to the balance sheet? Well, remember that the balance sheet is where we stand as of a point in time, meaning that if we told the story of a fairy tale at the end of the fairy tale, everybody is happily ever after. That's kind of like the balance sheet. That's where we sit at that point in time. And in this case, we had assets minus liabilities. We're sitting at 68,000. That's what theoretically we could sell for at this point in time. That's our happily ever after end of the story, 68,000. How did we get there? That's the income statement. That's the movie that you have to watch in order to know how they got to the end point of being happily ever after. In this case, they got revenue of 100,000 minus expenses of 60. That 40,000 is part of the story that got us to the 68,000. That's not the whole story. If we want to know more about it, we can look in the month prior to that, the month prior to that, go a year back, but that's going to be the relationship.